Finally, so let's talk about a little bit about the toucan simulation and how you might construct that. Um, the toucan system equations, now um, you should convince yourself that you know where these came from. You're basically taking a control volume around each can and um, do, you know, applying mass continuity. So for example, the top can, we're going to assume that there's no flow coming in. So you have 0 minus Q1. This K1 times the square root of 1, you should think of that as being the flow exiting the orifice. So, so for example, this is V dot 1 equals minus Q1. And so we need to have this K1. And V dot 2 is the difference, right? So it's going to be Q1 coming from the top can and leaving the bottom can, right? So which is the V2. So that will give you the second you, you should uh, second equation. You should uh, convince yourself that, that uh, you feel comfortable with where these equations came from. Uh, two state equations, two parameters are needed. You can refer back to those can sets and those equations for K1 and K2 to calculate some ideal values and test those in your simulation. Then the other, the last thing you need for, uh, in order to run a simulation, besides building the simulation, is to, you know, you, you're going to specify V1 and V2. And again, V1 will be some value, V2 typically zero. If you do use a formula node, you'll need some kind of script, just like I just showed you, that, that uh, sets your Q1 and Q2 appropriately. If the vol volumes in each of those cans are greater than zero, then you use the constitutive relations for the f for the flow uh, as we define them. But if you check and make sure they didn't go less than zero, if they have, then the flow uh, exiting each of those cans has to be set to zero. And this is one way of illustrating this. Um, let's see at the block diagram. And you can go ahead and take a block diagram like this and use it to guide your construction of a simulation diagram in, in LabVIEW. Um, in this case, I'm not using a formula node. I'm actually using this, this uh, nonlinear block, and I'm going to show you how to, how to construct something like this in LabVIEW. You can just go ahead and use a formula node, but if you want to use an uh, all-block description, then we can do that as well. Uh, but So note that this block, what it, what it does is it looks at whatever input's coming into it. If that value is less than zero, then it outputs zero. It's like if the can is volume is zero or less than zero, the output flow is zero. Otherwise, just pass that value of volume. And, and, and that way, that goes to the square root. You don't want to take the square root of a negative value. And then you multiply it by your gains, and you compute your flows. So I hope that um, uh, you've been able to review the lecture slides, and that, that's uh, understandable. OK, so let's uh, jump into. Uh, block diagram and construct that block diagram in LabVIEW. So what you want is, right, you want to go into your, grab your control and simulation loop and build one down there. And you're going to need summers, integrators, gains, and that saturation block. So let's first pull in the integrator integrators. And we need two of them, one for each state that we want to integrate. We need uh, some signal arithmetic. We need some gains for each of those um, uh, k, those k values. We need a summer for each equation, and the the uh, saturation block we find in this nonlinear system of submenu, and uh, it's right here. So we'll drop there. So and finally we need a square root. If we're building this all again in in, in a block diagram form, then you're going to want, you could have just built one here and then copied it. So the output from this integrator is, oops, I did that in reverse, didn't I? So let's move these to the other side. Okay, so here you're constructing v dot one it's going to go into your integrator and that's going to go uh, into a saturation block um, and what you want that block to do is is you want to look at that value and let me double click on here to show you you want to set the lower limit at zero and the upper limit you want to say that value can get as high as you want actually can't right because at some point the can would overflow but for our purposes, uh, we'll go ahead and say, we'll have other checks on the value, but you can actually put the, the maximum here and say, it's never going to get higher than that. It's going to spill over, but we're not modeling that. Okay, so that makes it infinite. So now you've got that block modeled 
Uh, let's actually delete this one and let's just copy this guy because we need it twice. Okay, so now both of these have that same effect. Now you can safely take the square root. And then multiply by a gain, which is going to be your k1. And then once you, cal once you calculate your q1, again, we're going to have to set this to k1, then you have q1 here. So the output from there is q1. The output from this gain is going to be q2. And now you can finish constructing your equations. You bring your q1, wrap it back as a negative in here. The input to this first summer Right, create a create a constant here, make that zero. So you have zero minus q1, right, equals b dot one here. Put that on there. Oops. Say so that's v1 dot. And that goes in here and you get v1 here. And of course you check it and then you take the square root. Okay, q1. Q1 also needs to be the input to this summer. You can actually change the orientation of your sums and minuses on here. Let's make that sum coming in from the top. Let's close this one and let's close that one. And uh, that's a negative. That's going to be Q2 coming in and then the output. Okay. So you see now I can bring Q1 wire it right from here right into there. And oops, I didn't want that. And then Q2 can wrap around there. Okay. Okay, so now you've got Q1 minus Q2 creating V.2 being integrated to get V2 and so on. All right, so look at the white, the white arrow. That's a complete diagram. You just need to specify K1, K2, initial conditions. Ah, right here. So we need to put V1 and V2 into these integrators. If, I've shown you how to do that in a previous uh, uh, simulation tutorial. Um, these gains, double click on here, you can specify your gain here. You could put a value, a numerical value. It's better to wire those in on a terminal, right? So now when you do that, now this is going to give you a, a place where you can wire in a K1 value and you can build that little formula node outside the simulation loop and specify the k1 here and the k2 okay and to finish the simulation here by right bringing in graph utilities bringing in setting your uh, simulation parameters and so on. I'm not going to do the whole thing for you here, but you can finish that off. Let me close these and bring up an example of a, of a toucan simulation. So you can see I've got, um, I'm not going to show the block diagram, but the, it, it, it actually uses formula nodes, this particular example, but you can see you, you, I put sliders on here so I can play around with V1 and V2. I actually have, just like that, uh, one can simulation. I have a while loop that lets this thing run continuously once I start it. Um, there's 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 uh, can parameters that are being used to compute these k1 and k2 values, which then get passed into the models. There's a value right here, the max v2 value, that looks at the values being computed for volume two, which is the red line here and it finds the peak. So there's built-in VIs and lab you to do all kinds of things. You can find the max value of an array and it can automatically for each time it computes the simulation it can it can kick out that V2 for you. Right, so let me run this guy and so you can see it's running. It's, it's running multiple simulations here with the same initial conditions and until I start changing initial conditions you won't see a difference. Now see I give it 50 milliliters in finds 15.1 as the peak value so you can see it runs these simulations pretty fast. Um, so note I'm, I'm running many, many experiments. Physical experiments aren't as easy to, to run, are they? So um, I'm catching a lot of data too here. I'm uh, actually not showing you that, but I'll show you that in a second. But I'm, I'm running multiple experiments, capturing, capturing all these different peak, peak values. And uh, again, I'm not going to show you how I did it, but I'm going to slide over here 
and show you something else. I, as each of those loops is running, I'm capturing the peak volume reached in the second can. The first time I did this, I didn't know what to expect. But it shows that for any initial volume, I, I get a certain peak, and the trend uh, is linear, which uh, kind of surprised me. I'm going to leave it at that. There's uh, some interesting things that you could do with this. Um, and uh, you want to try to generate this XY graph yourself, you can try to do that. I've shown you before how to do that in LabVIEW. Um, and this could also be used to help you solve the problem that we've asked you to solve in, in lab. Okay. Okay, I'm going to close up the discussion there. Thanks and good luck in the lab.